my name is Mark Langley and I'm one of the professional development lead at, at the National Science Learning Centre in York. And what we're going to have a look at today is we're going to have a look at how to make soft centred chocolates for a perfect Valentine's gift. Now the ones we're doing here today are in a more of a lab based environment. But if you do this in a food technology lab and use food quality ingredients and equipment, there's no reason that students couldn't actually try them out, so long as good hygiene precautions are taken. This demonstration, or class practical, is ideal for introducing key stage four students into how enzymes are actually used in practical technology and in everyday life. There are two main ways that uh, confectioners produce soft-centred chocolates. The first one is to take something like a chocolate shell, a bit like a Cadbury's egg, and actually fill that with a very cold sugar fondant mixture and then as it warms up it becomes a bit more gooey. The other way which is more interesting for us is that you can actually use an enzyme to start breaking down the sucrose which is the principal sugar used in confectionery into something that has a much more runny consistency and that's done by an enzyme called Invertase. Invertase is found in a lot of living organisms but it's commercially harvested from yeast and that takes um, the molecule of, of sucrose, uh, which is a disaccharide, and then breaks it down into two different sugars, into the monosaccharides of glucose and fructose. And then that's available for respiration much easier by the organism. The enzyme is also quite interesting in the fact that it actually works best in quite acidic conditions and also it has uh, an optimum temperature of about 60 degrees Celsius. A lot of students think that enzymes, once they go over body temperature, are denatured and therefore don't work. But this one actually works much better at a higher temperature. So, if we want to actually get students to demonstrate how we might go about doing it, then the easiest method to start off with is to take some sugar cubes and to those sugar cubes we can use a control measure of taking one and just adding a few drops of water and to the other we can add some invertase. So to the first one here, just add a few drops of water. I've stuck a cocktail stick in to try and make it easier to get it out of the chocolate. I've got some ordinary chocolate just melted over some hot water. So we can dip that in and try and cover all the chocolate. And if you were going to use this in a classroom, you might want to do this on greaseproof paper so you can peel them off easily afterwards. And to the other one, I'm going to add a couple of drops of food quality invertase. And because we're doing it well below the optimum temperature, it needs to be left for about a week before it will actually work. And after a week, you can check those, cut them open, see how they're doing. Now, another way that you might actually want to do this is how it's done often commercially, and that's to make a sugar fondant. The sugar fondant is made by boiling 400 grams of sugar to 100 millilitres of water until it forms a thick, colourless syrup. And that syrup can then be cooled down, and as it's cooled down, if it's beaten, you get the sugar fondant form. And the type of sugar fondant you get is how quickly it's cooled down or how much it's beaten. And here you can see we've got quite a, a stiff sugar fondant. And what we could do is cram that into a mould, something like a silicon baking sheet. And once it's in there and we've got the shape, we can then cover it with chocolate. And if we add invertase to some of those sugar fondants, not others, we should find that as it breaks, the invertase breaks down the sucrose into fructose and glucose, it becomes much more runny. So here's something that we've made earlier. And if we cut those open, we should see that as we go through, the inside is now much more squidgy and soft than it was before. Class practical or demonstration we've just done is a great way of linking students' everyday experiences back to the science we're trying to convey in the classroom. Enzymes can be quite a dry topic and one of the things we're trying to do on courses here at the National Science Learning Centre or the regional centres, particularly around applied and vocational sciences, is linking that everyday experience back to what we're trying to teach in the classroom through practical work assessments, links with industry. And we try and do that to encourage students to take an active interest in their science.